Hi everyone, David Looms here. Uh, thanks again for joining me for this video. If you saw the last video, um, I introduced the smart cool system that I've made for my for my Tormach 440, uh, and I said in it I think that uh, I was planning on producing a second prototype because there were a couple of things I didn't like about the original, and I also said I'd do a more detailed video on what's inside. So if you didn't see the original, I'll put a link here. Um, you should watch that first. This one will make a lot more sense that way. If you have seen the original, then let's carry on. So, what I have here is the original with some of the parts removed um, and put onto the second prototype. And just to give you an idea of what it was I didn't like, um, you can see inside here I think the tiny little gears that are doing the work. That's uh, a spare one. Now, there are a couple of things I didn't like about this. Firstly, the hub part is too narrow to be able to sit over the top of the servo output shafts so it has to sit on top and that's not very good. Um, secondly, the bore in the middle is only 3mm so you end up with 3mm shafts and it's incredibly difficult to attach things to them. Um, I found that uh, M2.5 set screws going into uh, these gears um, were capable of stripping their own threads um, when the torque came on to, uh, to the shafts. So I found some sintered metallic gears that are a bit bigger and that's why the new one, the second prototype, has had to grow a bit. Um, so let's open it up and I'll show you what's inside. Okay then, let's have a look at what's inside. Um, I've already taken off the coolant hubs. Uh, these are very simple. It's a single 4mm uh, hole for the shaft to fit in, an M3 set screw. The nozzles are threaded um, M10 at this end and it's a 4mm ID nozzle tube um, which gives pretty good flow um, I would imagine from uh, for flood coolant. It's a bit too big as it turns out for, for mist coolant but come back to that in a moment. At the other end I've put uh, 8mm push-in fittings and again the through bore in, in this section is 10mm all the way through so very little restriction in there. The one for the mist coolant is, differs only in having this uh, needle valve contraption for the coolant to go in. These are very neat. I don't know if it will show in the video, but there's actually a little window here which is a, a number of turns and you basically you pull out the blue bit and you can adjust it and you have a number of turns, fractional turn, so you can always find the same position again and that locks it in place. Um, as I said, these are 4mm ID for these tubes and I find that's really too big uh, to get effective mist coolant. So I've actually been using a bit of 4mm tube, 2.5mm ID and it simply telescopes inside. Uh, I'm going to experiment with a few more sizes. I've got some carbon tube that has a 2mm ID which I think might be even better. It basically gives you much better range for the, uh, the, the jet of air. So I'll set that to one side. Now if I bring back the original one again, this was machined in, a, in one piece um, and unfortunately when I made it bigger for the bigger gears I didn't have any end mills long enough to make the pockets so the new one is in two pieces uh, with a... Uh, see I've got these screws loose, yeah there we go laser cut acetate shield to cover the, uh, the gaps around the servos I'll take that off, that's not too difficult um, and because the screws are now out it will simply lift off and you can see how it's done. Now you can get a good comparison here of the size of the uh, new gears compared to, there you go, I'll sit that beside it, I think you can just about see there, there's a bit of a difference. Um, this gives a much better feel to the thing, it's much more robust um, and it's a lot easier to attach these to the shafts firmly enough to avoid uh, knocks causing it to slip. Um, and there's the bottom part, and I hope you can see it's 4mm shafts, they are ball raised, it's stainless steel shafts, stainless steel ball raises um, with, sheet, with rubber shields, so that's fairly waterproof. The actual servo motors themselves, well, you can find these on Amazon, AliExpress, anywhere like that for a very small amount of money. You can have them in a number of different forms. If you want waterproof ones, not a problem. Um, these ones, in fact, aren't, but they are ball raced and they are metal geared, so they'll last forever. And at uh, 10 to $15 each, I don't think replacing them is a problem. So that's what's inside the mechanics. Now, uh, 
Let me go and fetch the electronic module and I'll show you what's inside that too. So here we have the uh, microcontroller that uh, interfaces to PathPilot and drives the servers to the appropriate positions. A uh, quick tour around the, the case. Um, we have here the USB-C connector which goes to um, either just a USB, uh, sorry, either just a phone charger or better still to the PathPilot controller. At the other end, 9-pin um, sub D um, goes to the two servo motors on the coolant module itself. We also have optionally um, four outputs which can be used to drive uh, solenoid valves or the like if uh, your PathPilot computer doesn't have enough. Um, certainly if you're trying to use flood and uh, mist coolant at the same time you will need another relay, so those would do. Um, if you want to use them, there's an input around this side for an either 12 or 24 volt power supply. It's not required if you're not using the outputs to drive solenoids. So let's open the box up. Uh, if I take the connectors out of those two ends, I've already removed the case screws. So the end plates come off. Then the whole top of the case with the electronics slides out. And it's a simple matter to separate the top of the case with the display. Put it on one side, and that's what it actually looks like. Um, this little thing here, that's the brains beside the, behind the uh, beast. It's quite a, quite an animal. This it's uh, it's an ESP32. If you're interested in that kind of thing, it has twin 240 megahertz processors cores on it, which makes it uh, well, a great deal more powerful than you normally see at that size. Um, it also has built-in Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. I have added um, a, micro US, a micro SD card rather for the storage. So before somebody asks <laughs> how many tool programs can it handle, um, 10 million wouldn't even scratch the surface. It, so there's no, there's, no, there's no reasonable limit um, at all. Um, these little white things you can see here are solid state relays. These are the things that uh, actually drive the solenoid valves if you want to use them to drive the coolant. Um, and that's all there is to it really. It's uh, fairly simple, um, fairly low maintenance and hopefully it will last for a long time. Alright, so with the wonder of video editing we're uh, back in one piece again. The other thing I mentioned is that the whole thing can be powered just with a uh, USB phone charger. So I have a USB phone charger here. It's a USB-C connector. If I plug that in, it comes alive. You can see the display lighting up, lighting up. And if I plug the servos in, there we go. That should be us running. I have my trusty tablet here, so I can start up the app. And it takes a few seconds. Just there we go to connect to the device, and that should be us running. So if I, yeah, there we go. I've my channel one and channel two. All working as they should do so uh, that's how it goes um, I hope that's of interest to you uh, let me know in the comments what you think and I'll talk to you again next time bye for now